On today's episode of NBA Kicks, we have the top 10 best sneakers worn during week two of the bubble, as well as the debut of a brand new signature sneaker, which I did not see coming at all. And we also have a three-way tie for the number three spot. So be ready to let me know which of these sneakers is your favorite in the comment section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more episodes of NBA Kicks every single week. I'm your host, Jeramon. Let's get this thing tipped off. Starting off the list at number 10, we have Cal Lowry with a very colorful colorway of the Harden Volume 4 from Adidas. During his game against the Magic, Cal Lowry rocked these rainbow Harden 4s, which seem to be an Adidas camp exclusive thanks to the graphic on the inner heel. Which camp exactly, I'm not really too sure. But what I am sure of is the fact that these stand out on the floor extremely well, obviously thanks to their rainbow color scheme that might not be your cup of tea up close, but you gotta admit, from a distance, they look pretty dope, especially when contrasted with the Raptors red and black uniforms. Next up at number nine, we got Donovan Mitchell with a new colorway of the Adidas Don issue number two. So Donovan Mitchell has been rocking the follow up to his first signature sneaker in the bubble. And while I much rather would have seen Adidas hook him up with a sequel to the mailman colorway from the first Don issues, the pair that Mitchell rocked while sporting the Karl Malone era jazz jerseys is still pretty clean. Using a white upper metallic silver midsole alongside some pastel colors, the medial side of this colorway has the word limitless on the overlay, which is a nice personal touch, but for some reason, the branding on both the tongue and the heel are dressed in black. Personally, I would have kept these details the same pastel color scheme. I think that would make these a lot cleaner like we see throughout the rest of the silhouette. But at the end of the day, it's still a pretty clean colorway, which is good enough to crack the top 10. But seriously, Adidas, you need to go back to making dope colorways like you did for the first nine issues. So stop playing around and give Spider Mitchell the Venoms and we'll all be happy. Coming in at the number 8 spot, we have Kawhi Leonard with another colorway of the New Balance Kawhi. Now, New Balance has been hooking Kawhi up with a number of colorways in the bubble of his first signature model. But this time, we get to see Kawhi in a more traditional colorway. Using a red, white, blue, and black color scheme, these are clearly inspired by Kawhi's current team, the Los Angeles Clippers. And overall, much like Kawhi himself, these are pretty straightforward, but in a sea of oversaturated customs and PEs, these are a nice change of pace, and that's why I feel they deserve the spot at number eight. Next up at number seven, we have Trey Burke with the Reebok question low. Now it isn't that often that we see the questions on the modern NBA floor, because while they were a very popular option back in their heyday, in the modern era, the Reebok questions haven't aged very nicely performance wise. Overall, the fit is pretty loose, the materials are heavy, and the traction can be hit or miss depending on your floor and the colorway's rubber compound. However, that didn't really seem to stop Trey Burke from rocking them on the court. And thank God, because the nostalgia I felt watching Burke play in the questions was a nice little blast from the past, especially since this white and baby blue colorway pairs extremely well with the Dallas Unis. But for real, the only reason why I would play in a pair of questions is if I was playing outdoors because they just don't make shoes as durable as they did when the questions were the new kids on the block and that's just the cold hard truth. At number 6, we have Emmanuel Moutier with the nether classic, the Air Jordan 18. Now this is a sneaker that we see very rarely on the modern NBA floor. Despite MJ rocking the 18s for a brief stint while he was on the Wizards, the 18s are one of the more obscure silhouettes in the Air Jordan line, probably due to the fact that they were one of the most unbreathable sneakers the world has ever seen. Depending on how you feel about the 18s in general, your excitement level upon seeing these may vary, but for me, I'm always a huge fan of nostalgia, and I also just think the 18s are a very luxurious looking sneaker that just belong on the court. So big ups to Moutier for rocking these, but next time, maybe come through with the custom for a higher spot on the list. All right, so before we get to our top five sneakers, you guys already know that we gotta mention our honorable mentions. Derek White rocked a retro Spurs custom of the Nike Kobe AD mid. Semi Ojale rocked an Air Foam Posit Pro with the words love us on the heel. Portland guard Anthony Simons rocked a Bucks colorway of the Kobe 5 Pro Tro. And Timothy Lawal Cabarro rocked the Derek Jeter Air Jordan 11 Lowe's 
which I think is the first time we've seen these on an NBA floor. Let me know if you think any of these sneakers should have made the top 10 in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and hit that like button for extra good karma the next time you're on the sneakers app. I know you're like me and you've been striking out lately, so you need all the good luck you can get. Starting off our top five, we have John ja Moran with the Nike KD4 Weatherman. Now, when the Weatherman KD4s dropped at the end of 2011, it was an extremely hyped sneaker upon release. And nine years later, there's still a grail for many sneaker enthusiasts, including myself. John ja Morant decided to stunt on everybody during his game against the Raptors. And every time I look at the Weathermans, I wish I had a pair in my collection. So that's good enough for a top five spot in my book. But what I really want to know is, if John ja Morant is your 2019-20 NBA Rookie of the Year, I personally have Zion, but I know that's kind of a controversial pick. Next up at number four, we actually have a tie with two colorways of the Nike Kobe 5 Pro Tro. All right, so on one hand, we have DeMar DeRozan with a very interesting green, volt and orange colorway that is rounded out with black hits as well as a translucent gum bottom which give a very unique look. But on the other hand, we have PJ Tucker with still a very colorful colorway, but maybe not as crazy with more neutral tones on the upper and the outsole, while the rest of the shoe is dressed in multiple colors as well as a graphic swoosh. I couldn't decide which of these two colorways deserve the spot on this week's list, so I copped out and just put both of them on there. But if I had to pick just one of these, I'd probably go with the more unique DeRozan colorway but that's just me. Let me know which pair you rather add to your collection by commenting on my latest Instagram post, which you can find with the link down below. Next up at number three, we have a three-way battle of the Air Jordan 34. All right, so much like the Kobe 5, there were multiple colorways of the Jordan 34 that I just couldn't decide which one was the best. Jason Tatum wore a monochromatic taco PE with an all red color scheme, as well as a very affable taco logo on the back of the heel, while Carmelo Anthony wore a caution tape colorway similar to Oladipo's PE from last week, but in my opinion, in a much cleaner red, black, and white color scheme, while Zion Williamson wore a Mardi Gras inspired PE, complete with a Mardi Gras beads graphic on the midsole, alongside a very nice purple, black, and metallic gold color scheme. Personally, I'm leaning more towards JT's Clean Taco PE since you guys already know red is my favorite color. But honestly, you can't really go wrong with either one of these, especially since they're on my favorite Encore Performer of 2019. So again, you really can't go wrong. Coming in as our runner up, we have Devin Booker with his PE of the Kobe 5 Pro Tro. Now Book's PE of the Kobe 5s, which uses a white and orange outline color scheme, it isn't really that new. In fact, he actually wore these last week as well, and I opted to not put them on last week's episode. But since then, the Suns have remained the only undefeated team in the bubble, and Booker hit a nasty game winner with what seemed like the entire Clippers roster guarding him. So I couldn't help but honor that Mamba mentality performance by putting both he and his kicks as our runner up on this week's list. If Kobe is living through any player right now, it's definitely Devin Booker. Finally, at number one, we have the debut of the Under Armour Embiid 1. Last week, Under Armour made the very surprising announcement of Joel Embiid's first signature sneaker, the Embiid 1, which uses a dual cushion setup with hover in the heel, as well as the glorious return of Micro G in the forefoot. If you're wondering what's so glorious about Micro G, you can check out my in-depth coverage of the Embiid 1 on last week's episode of The Sneaker Show. But for now, let's just take a look at the Embiid 1 visually. On the surface, these look like a pretty straightforward silhouette without any major design features aesthetically, as well as a minimal branding setup with an Under Armour logo on the heel of the midsole, as well as a small signature logo on the tongue. The TPU overlay that is integrated with the lacing system on the midfoot does have a pretty nice gradient fade design, but aside from that killer cushioning system, the feature that I'm most excited about with the Embiid 1 is the traction. Not only does that pattern look like it'll provide coverage in multiple directions, but the pattern is very nicely spaced out, and from what I can tell, it looks like the pattern peaks, which means it'll be able to grab and bite the floor extremely well. 
These might not make any waves in the off-court community, but on the court, these could potentially be a performance beast, and that is exactly why I am very excited for the Embiid's One release, which is officially set for September 18th, but for now, the Embiid One from Under Armour is the best sneaker worn in the NBA during week two of the bubble. Thanks so much for watching another episode of NBA Kicks, which airs every single week, so be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as ring that notification bell so you never miss an episode. And be sure to drop this video a like because that helps me out a lot. My name's Darren. It's been great having you. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.